I am back. Rudrance for Black and White Network. Well, we're going to talk about Further Fallout from Jason Aldean's song. I can't believe we're... I almost... I just said song, but it just occurred to me. I was like, really? All of this fallout over one song, by the way, that was deemed racially offensive when every rap song ever could be potentially offensive to... 90% of people if, if they wanted it to be, but I mean, I don't believe in censorship of rap songs either, but it's amazing. Jason Aldean dropped this song, and as we know, the world exploded. Well, actually, in fact, technically, the song didn't make the world explode. The video did. CMT yanked it. My goodness, every leftist on the planet, every mainstream media outlet on the planet wrote a hit piece on Jason Aldean, basically calling him a racist. And now we've got the Hollywood Reporter also taking shots at Jason Aldean. And this time, my goodness, they think they've added some credibility to it by using racially charged and woke university professors? You think that's going to add credibility to that? Really? Question mark? Are you, are you serious? Now, it's shocking. Oh, there's there's the view right there playing. We know they lost their minds on Jason Aldean's song. By the way, number one, hot Billboard 100. I said the other day, I figured up it had sold roughly 403,000 copies as of sometime, I guess, last week, really. I, and by now, it's probably a gold record, uh, which is going to be hilarious when that video drops. The Hollywood Reporter condemned country music star Jason Aldean's Try That in a Small Town and quoted academics, accusing it of spreading division and racism. Oh, God. Aldean became a national figure after he released a music video for his song Try That in a Small Town that included authentic news footage of rioters, looters, and violence in 2020 after the death of George Floyd. In the song, the country singer warned such activity would not be tolerated in rural America. He's not wrong. I mean, he's just not wrong, okay? Uh, but again, that's part of the problem right here, right? That's the interpretation of it as well, when really and truly we're also talking about uh, using common sense, of which I'm sure these, these professors did not use any, but using common sense, not acting like a fool, not burning down biz businesses, not harming people. I don't know how many people actually died. I know David Dorn died in St. Louis, the former police officer up there. Of course, he was defending a pawn shop. He was black, by the way. My goodness, the leftists never bring that up. Never. David Dorn, outside of conservative outlets, there was no David Dorn to the, the leftists in the mainstream media. It's a shame. CMT responded by pulling the music video from circulation on their network. I still hope we have some kind of a Bud Light style boycott going against them. I know I will never watch country music television again. The Hollywood Reporter published a piece on Wednesday, quote, how Jason Aldean cynically built small town to appeal to Trump country. God, really? Okay. Noting that some have blasted the song as, quote, a pro-lynching anthem and anti-black. What would Trump have to do with something being pro-lynching or anti-black? I'm waiting because nobody still provided proof that Donald Trump has ever been a racist. Not one time. Not one time. The Hollywood Reporter quoted Hunter College. Who? Who? Hunter College music theory professor Philip Ewell arguing the song as part of a phenomenon of subtle yet unmistakable anti-blackness amid America's cultural divide. So this is a perfect example of for people like us that's that's from the country. I mean, look, I live in the country, but I got a I got an extensive white collar background, worked in corporate for over a decade, all this kind of thing. But yet, even while working in corporate, you know, in rural America, we apply common sense, even in the workplace like that, right? It's not all about academics and book smarts. You have to be able to apply common sense to your thought process. Anti-blackness amid America's cultural divide. Clearly, this professor did not apply 
Common sense. Wow. Imagine that. Imagine that. Have you ever heard of the term book smart? Yeah, being book smart also implies you have no common sense. Right now, in 2023, we're having these massive disagreements about race and what role it's played in the history of our country. Well, you guys are trying to rewrite history. So that's something. History doesn't change just because you want it to. It is what it is. The Democrats are still the party of the Ku Klux Klan. You guys can't change that, no matter what. And in, in music, it plays out in these extremely subtle ways sometimes. It's hard to deny some of these embedded stereotypes that we all told the Hollywood Reporter. I've listened to some of Jason Aldean's music. I think he's a pretty good artist. But it's just something that kind of comes in culture, anti-blackness. Stop it. Because it's part of the founding of our country. Great. We've now officially reeled in anti-patriotism. Oh, now if you're patriotic, you're a racist. The founding fathers. Yeah, okay, great. The founding of our country. Racist. Oh, man. Again, blacks actually had slaves. Uh, just, Just putting that out there. We shouldn't run away from that simple fact. He claimed that such lyrics, quote, pull gun on an owner of a liquor store, have an implicit anti-black message in particular, adding anybody really should understand that there's a strong racial undertone to these lyrics. Are you literally saying only black people would rob a liquor store? Because that sure sounds like what you're saying, and that in itself would be the racist, yeah. Quote, someone robbing a liquor store in the American psyche, the person who's doing that, without saying it is a black person, right? It's just in our minds. It's supposed to be that way, Ewell argued. Okay. And when you paint that picture in someone's mind of someone pulling a gun on an owner of a liquor store, the person pulling the gun is black. Really? Have you ever met? Met somebody messed out in rural America? Really? I mean, the skinny white boy that can't stay out of jail? You believe he never robs a liquor store? You moron. The owner of a liquor store is probably Asian or maybe white. Maybe that's possible. I don't know. Once again, I guess black people can't own or own liquor stores as well. And there are these racial stereotypes that play out like lyrics. The same piece quoted country music historian and Belmont University professor Don Cusick warning that there were, quote, coded racial messages in the footage, regardless of whether riders of multiple races were shown. What? You literally debunked your own damn sentence? Warning that there were coded racial messages in the footage, regardless of if multiple races were shown. It's baffling. What upsets people is the coded language and coded pictures. you got a guy with a hoodie and a violent act, but it could have been a white guy. White guys wear hoodies too, but the implications go far beyond. And if you're black, you're looking at the video a whole lot differently than if you're white, Cusick suggested. And that's the dividing factor. No. Let's be objective here. If somebody's looking at that and they want to see it as racist, that's a them problem. And it's a lack of of, of intelligently interpreting something and being objective. How many members of Antifa are white? I mean, most of them. Hell, there were a ton of white liberals out there for Black Lives Matter riots, for crying out loud. Come on. Quote, even though I think Aldine was careful, or the production company was careful, to have whites in pictures of riots, as well as implying blacks as part of the division in this country, people in the metropolitan areas are looking at it differently than rural areas, Cusick theorized. People who are Trump supporters are looking at it a lot differently than intelligentsia? Okay. They knew what they were doing. Stop that. Cusick argued later, adding there's a giant wall in this country. Division. That's right. And you guys are causing it. These kinds of articles 
that the Hollywood Reporter put together is exactly the problem. People that are, well, they think they're smarter than everybody else. Let's put it that way. I mean, just because you have those degrees, that doesn't mean you have a hell of a lot of common sense. It's pretty obvious. And instead of taking some of the bricks off the top of the wall, I think Aldean added some of the bricks to the wall, or at least the video did. Culture commentator Christian Toto of Hollywood and Toto rejected such claims to Fox News, saying his song simply reflects the feelings of many across the country. Try that in a small town speaks to a budding frustration that law and order is no longer part of American culture. I mean, that is a frustration. It is. It's saying that that it's okay to hit streets just because you disagree with something or have a problem with what what something that happened in this country. We can just hit the streets and burn everything down. Yeah, you can't do that, actually. You can't. Witness the defund the police movement and lenient prosecutors in many big cities, he said. Many Americans have forgotten the violent aspects of recent social media protests and how the media framed them as, quote, mostly peaceful. Aldine may agree with the lyrics message, or they may be him channeling the frustrations of hardworking Americans who lead lawful lives and hate to see their neighborhood burn. Bravo. He deserves a creative space to pursue his goal, and art is often a way to spark debate. Defending, defending Aldine's artistic license to explore these ideas. Quote, it's hardly the first song to celebrate or glorify violence. Again, every rap song ever. And a lot of metal songs. And I'm a fan of both. Dismissing the idea of racist coding in the song or video. Plus, the violent protests in question were multicultural in nature. You notice the two academics prior to this person right here. I mean, they come out and said, yeah, there were some white people involved, but that didn't matter. Yeah, it does matter. And context matters. And it does matter who was actually shown in the video. Sure it does. Because that was a fact. Look, it was loony lefties that were burning the cities to the ground. There you go. In wildly democratic cities. There you go. And Tifa's membership appears primarily white. Based on news reports, while many white Americans joined the BLM protests in their communities... Both peaceful and violent. Toto blasted the Hollywood Reporter, saying that the outlet and others were not assessing Aldine's work in a non-biased, good-faith way. Absolutely. Absolutely. They know they're out there trying to paint a narrative of a certain song. My God, we think this is bad. The Rolling, Rolling Stone has, has just trounced all over this. And what's hilarious is to see how much it's not worked. And how much it's backfired. I don't even know how many views this video's got now. At last check, I think it was 24 million or something like that on YouTube. The entertainment media is relentlessly biased to the left as news media. It's no surprise Hollywood reporters would frame the story in this way, ignoring the violent nature of many progressive protests and shaming Aldine, a straight white country star. Bravo. So some intelligent remarks at the end, it seems. A blind squirrel finds nut, maybe. I don't know, but it may, that makes sense. That's what I was saying a minute ago. I mean, even though the guy, that one guy literally admitted, yeah, there was whites in there, but uh, we feel like that might have been framed a certain way, or uh, we still interpret that it's all black people that would ever rob a liquor store. Wow, okay. Isn't it funny how the left has painted the right as racist, but it's the left that's trying to increasingly resegregate the country and separate us out and have a clear lines of you're white, you're Asian, you're Hispanic, you're black, blah, blah, blah. When the goal was just a few years ago that everybody was just going to sort of blend in, right? Wasn't that, wasn't that the thing? When, when, when all the, the civil rights stuff happened and everything, and now the left is trying to redraw draw clear lines. Except now, I tend to believe it's not about race. They're wanting to draw clear lines between the left and the right. 
Don't worry, you've done that. Because dumbass articles just like that have uh, successfully accomplished that. People with common sense are going to read that and be like, that's nonsense. That's complete horse crap. Be objective, right? It's crazy. It's, it's this guy, they have shot every, sh- they have unloaded the gun on Jason Aldean multiple times, the media has. They keep missing. His fans are showing up in droves. The streams off the charts. The sales off the charts. iTunes, number one. Hot Billboard 100, number one. And it's funny because the backlash, as it increased, the more it backfired. I love that, by the way. Tell me what you think, Black and White Network supporters. Wow. The hits keep on coming for Jason Aldean. I can't wait till this thing like goes platinum, sells a million copies. Peace. I'm out. Till next time.